I realized when I burn out from my last corporate job, that balance is critical. And if you let things get too far out of balance, your life will implode. And my life imploded. And this is a great subject for we do hard things because, oh, yeah. you know, my last corporate gig, I was a global vice president of a, you know, fortune 100 company. And I was working 80 hour weeks and was had was losing weight and smoking tons of cigarettes. And it, my life was not, was not good. I wasn't happy. You know, um, I, I had people, you know, sending me emails at three o'clock in the morning from Shanghai expecting, you know, an answer in a half an hour. And I was asleep. And when I woke up, they were pissed at me. And this, you know, the, the, the phone buzzing thing was, it was a palpitation creator, you know? And on top of that, you were talking about health, health things. My dad, um, who I've always been very close with my whole life, developed, started to develop dementia and was essentially disappearing from our family, you know, um, slowly. And it was incredibly stress, stressful and distressing to see that happen. And there came a point where I was just like, is this what life is about? Like, is, is this what's really important? Um, and I had to say to myself, no, it's not. I would rather spend a hundred percent of my time in the last three months of my dad's life when he recognizes me than showing up for a global snack meeting, you know, it was like, so I walked away and it was, it was a traumatic, scary decision to make, but ultimately the right one. And I had destroyed my mental health and my physical health to such an extent that it took me almost a year to get better. And I, that was a very, very hard lesson to learn was that you can't let your life get so out of balance even if you're pursuing something that you love. And I thought I was pursuing something that I loved. I was also pursu pursuing a lot of money because I was making a lot of money. And I, I had to re-examine all of that and say, hey, you know, life is too short. You know, am I going to wake up wishing that I'd spent, you know, the last three months with my dad or showing up for a global snacks meeting conference in Shanghai? Right. And I had to make that choice. And it was a very, very hard choice to make. And here's the thing. Hey, perfect segue back to the very first part of this conversation, which was ageism, because I knew that if I walked away from this role, it would be the last role that I would be able to have in my career formally with a company or an agency, because I was too old to be hired again in as a creative leader. And so I knew that not only was I making a decision to walk away from this role to be with my family and to repair my health, but I was also making a decision that I was going to be working the rest of my professional life as an independent. And that wow. was scary as shit. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, your, your resume includes, you know, Procter and Graham, Gamble and, and Kraft Foods and um, PetSmart and and huge huge companies and so at that point because that's not that old it's let's let's all remember that you know your mid uh, midish fifties is not that old to say like hey I've spent the last uh, what twenty years working towards the thing I wanted the career I thought I wanted all of this time all of this effort you put all of that stuff in and you know in your heart that by walking away, which may be the right thing to do, but mm -hmm. walking away is is the closing of your corporate career and that's it. How, how, did, <laughs> how did you do that? Uh, what do you mean? How I, I did it with incredible trepidation. Mm -hmm. I, I really had no idea what the future was going to hold. Because as I said, I'd really kind of destroyed my mental health and physical health. And I just know, knew that I just couldn't continue. Yeah, but so, what does this look like? Is this like a, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I had let's to paint figure a out, scene. It's 11 p.m. Yeah, yeah. There's a bottle of scotch. You have the email drafted <laughs> and you, yeah. you hit send. I'm resigning. You close the laptop and right. you go, I guess that's it. Yeah, kind of. That was kind of like what it was. And then I took a year off. I literally took a full year off. I did a bunch of, I saw my dad through the last few months of his life. And Is that beautiful? I, like, like, like as scary as everything was, 
did that at least reassure you like this is the right I am doing the right thing because I have absolutely this time, I have this freedom absolutely yeah I would never ch- I wouldn't change the last the last bit of my relationship with him for anything in the world because I feel completely fulfilled about it I mean a lot of people in their lives end up with regrets around you know family relationships I have no regrets um, and that's that's a beautiful thing and a lot of people can't say that um, and so, yeah, so I took a year off and I, and I wasn't really sure I liked doing what I was doing anymore. I had kind of destroyed myself so much in terms of my career mentally in my own head that I wasn't really sure that I really enjoyed doing what I was doing anymore. So I had to get away from it for a while. And I ended up, um, I didn't know if I liked design, didn't know if I liked branding, you know, and I just thought, what, what should I do? So I just thought, I started to just look around and I was really excited and inspired by craft, this kind of craft development that was happening in the world. Like there were all these craft makers, leather makers, you know, food, specialty food makers, all this wonderful kind of like get your hands dirty entrepreneurship. Like an artisan type. Yeah. Movement. Movement in the country. And I was fascinated by that. And I was talking to an old strategy partner of mine from a previous agency I worked at and we decided and we, we were both excited about it. So we decided to start a kind of provenance driven craft accessories company, e-commerce company. And so we partnered up together and over a period of a year, we built an e-commerce company that specialized in craft products, bags, candles, you know, honey, you know, food items. Um, and but everything, the criteria was that everything had to be made by a person with a story and we would tell that story. And, but in the process of starting this company and we were bootstrapping everything, right? So it was just her and me. And, you know, I was designing the logo, I was designing the website. I was, you know, building an email list and doing email blasts. I was doing all the product photography. We were going to trade shows and sourcing products and we were setting up all the infrastructure of shipping things. And we were building a company and a brand from absolute scratch. And I was doing everything very hands-on myself. And I hadn't been this hands-on in 20 years. I've been managing teams, you know, as an executive for a long period of time. I hadn't been doing design. I hadn't been doing photography. I'd been directing it right? I didn't know dookie about email marketing. I didn't know anything about content marketing or social media marketing. And so I was having to do all of this for this little startup that we were starting. And what that did for me was it relit the fire in me of the joy of building a brand from scratch. And when we came out of the other end of building that brand, the funny thing was, is that my friend and I were, my colleague and I were driving, you know, back from a, a from a, a product buying trip. And she was saying, you know what? It's been really awesome. I'm synopsizing. It's been really awesome building this brand, but I'm not really sure I want to ship products every day. So I'm, I'm going to hand it off to you. And I said, you know what? I don't either. Let's just shutter it. <laughs> so we built this whole thing. We ran it for like three months and we shuttered it. And you could look at that and say, this was an absolute massive fail, right? You tapped your savings to build this thing and to live for a year as you created this thing. But what that was for me was, it was an exercise in rejuvenation of my passion for what I did. And then I took that and I said, hey, I'm going to start my own consultancy and I'm going to help small to medium-sized businesses and entrepreneurs build their brands from scratch. And I'm going to use the methodology and the techniques that I used with the P and G's and the PepsiCo's and the, and the, you know, the GE's and the Honda's. And I'm going to help little businesses use those to rock and roll. And that's what I do now. And it's absolutely exciting. And I love it more than anything. Um, And, but I needed that year of downtime and I needed that year of creating something from scratch and learning everything from, from, you know, the ground up again to come to that realization and to relight that fire in myself. You have got to hear the full conversation I had with Philip Van Dusen. We talk about trend spotting. We talk about what it's like to be a creative today. And we talk about building your own personal brands. 
click on the link right over there to hear the full talk.